In this section, we'll calculate the monthly cost associated to a house mortgage and discuss some other things related to um, home ownership. Let's begin with some definitions related to a mortgage. So a mortgage is a long-term loan for buying a home and the property serves as collateral for the loan. The down payment is the initial payment to the seller, typically a percentage of the home price and this is dependent on the loan that you get. The mortgage amount will then be the difference between the home selling price and the down payment. The monthly payments depend on the mortgage amount, interest rate, and duration of the loan. Now when it comes to a loan, we've got some different options when it comes to interest rates. You've got fixed rate mortgages. The interest rate remains constant over the loan term. And variable rate mortgages, also known as ARMs. Here the interest rate changes based on market conditions. Um, one thing to keep in mind when calculating the mortgage, there's a term called points. Points are a one-time fee at closing and it's 1% of the loan amount per point. The reason somebody would want to purchase a point is it does reduce the interest rate on the loan. So for instance, if some bu buyer paid two points, they'd have to pay 2% of the loan amount at closing to secure a certain amount reduction in interest rate. Um, APR is the annual percentage rate of the loan. And this will be our formula that we're going to get to get our monthly payment. So keep in mind this formula in particular. Here P is the principal or the loan amount. That's the selling price minus down payment. R is the annual interest rate expressed as a decimal. N is the number of payments per year. And T is the number, the term of the, the length of the loan in years. Let's go to our next example where we can use this formula. So here we have a uh, price of a home is 195,000. The bank requires a 10% down payment and two points due at the time of closing. We've got a 30 year fixed rate mortgage at 7.5%. Find the required down payment, the amount of the mortgage, how much should be paid for the points at closing. And then after we find that, we'll calculate our monthly payment and the total interest paid over 30 years. To calculate a down payment, I'm going to first change my percent to a decimal. I find the decimal place, move it over twice, and we see my rate is 0 0.10. The down payment is 10% of 195, so to find the percent of a number, you take the percentage as a decimal and multiply it by the number. Let me bring up my on-screen calculator. And here my down payment is 19500 So the amount of the mortgage is the advertised selling price minus the amount that we put down. So let's calculate this. So the mortgage will be $175,500. Now if we go back to our definition of points, points are 1% of mortgage. is one point. So if we have two points, that's equal to 2% of the mortgage value. So to find the percent of the number, I change the percent to decimal place and that's 0 0.02 times the amount of the mortgage is this. Let's bring up our calculator and we should get $3,510 paid for points. And again, remember the goal of points is to secure a lower interest rate for the term of the loan. Next, we need to calculate our monthly payment. Now, I've copied our formula here, so we don't have to go back and forth on our page. If you don't have this nearby, I encourage you to write it out in your paper. It will be helpful if you can fill in the values one after another. So I'm going to quickly identify the p-value, the r, the n, and the t, so that we can just substitute this into the formula. We'll write it out with the parentheses that are needed, and then we'll type it into our calculator. The p is the principal, the amount of the mortgage, so that's $175,500. Our rate, it was a 10% 
Oh, sorry. Not a 10% interest rate, a 7.5% interest rate. It was a 10% down payment. So I got a little distracted there. Change this to a decimal and that becomes 0 0.075 as our interest rate. There's 12 payments in a year because it's a monthly payment each month and it is a 30 year loan. So if I was to calculate this, I'm going to substitute all these values into our formula here. And I'm going to have parentheses for the top part of the expression. $175,500 times okay, the parentheses for the top here for my fraction. Keep the whole top together. 0 0.075 divided by n is 12. Keep that in parentheses as well. The goal of writing these parentheses is to make sure my calculator keeps everything together. And I think as we've said in earlier videos, if you've got a pretty high powered calculator like a graphing calculator, not this much care is needed. But if you've got a simpler calculator, working with these parentheses, make sure the fractions stay together, everything that's supposed to be multiplied in the top stays together versus the bottom. Okay. And we write out our outer parentheses, 1 minus parentheses 1 plus, okay, now I need to deal with parentheses for this fraction, an overall parentheses to show it's a fraction. Then I'm going to keep the top together, divided by 12, keep the bottom together. And now I need to close the parentheses that started here this whole term because that's what's going to be raised to the exponent. Exponent negative 12 times 30. Close parentheses for the exponent and then one final parentheses for the bottom of the fraction. So next up we need to carefully type this into our calculator. So parentheses 175500 times parentheses parentheses 0 0.075, close the top parentheses, start the bottom parentheses, close the bottom parentheses, close the fraction parentheses, and then close the parentheses for the whole top, divided by parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus. Now I need to start my fraction parentheses, then the top part of the parentheses, close the top parentheses, start the bottom parentheses, close the bottom parentheses, close the fraction parentheses, then I need to close this overall parenthesis that was in this two term set. And now I deal with my exponent, parentheses for the exponent, negative 12 times 30, close the exponent parentheses, and then I need to close my final denominator parentheses. And we'll get this value rounded to two decimal places. That's $1,227.12. So let's calculate the total payments for the loan. We know each month we pay $1,227.12. Times 12 will get you the yearly payments. Times 30 again would get you the 30 year payments. So we take 112.127.12 times 12, that many payments per year, times 30. So. is the total payments over 30 years. So then to calculate the amount in interest is we take our total payments, we subtract the amount of the mortgage, which was 175,500. A common mistake here would be to subtract the purchase price of the house, which was 195,000. But remember, we did pay our down payment, so it reduced our mortgage amount at the initial point. Calculating this, our total interest should be $266,263.20. So our next example is very similar to the previous one, with the exception that instead of being a 30-year loan, we're now looking at a 15-year old loan. So all the details are the same apart from that. The loan or the price is $195,000. 10% down payment, we're paying two points. Interest rate is still 7.5%, but now we're dealing with a 15 year fixed rate loan. I would highly encourage you to pause this video and attempt this example on your own. You can reference our previous example for help if needed. And then unpause the example to check your work. 
Now in calculating the down payment, it's the same as before our rate, or sorry, excuse me, I'm mixing this up again. The down payment could be turned into a decimal of 0 .010 as an equivalent percentage as a decimal. 0 0.10 times 195,000 will give us a $19,500 down payment. The mortgage amount is the selling price of the home minus the down payment, which as before is $175,500. The cost of two points, remember each point is a percent of the mortgage amount, so we're finding 2% or 0.02 times 175,500, which will be 3510 And next up, we need to calculate the monthly payment. Now we know the principal for the loan is $175,500. Our interest rate is 0.075. The number of payments in a year is 12. However, our time is now 15. So I do want to make sure we write that as 15. And now I'm going to write these out, substituting into our formula. And I'm going to include all the parentheses that are needed so that when I'm done here, I can just type this into the calculator. So following the pattern from our previous example, And now we'll type this into our calculator. Okay, so we've closed the top part of the fraction, divided by, start the bottom part of the fraction, parentheses, one minus open parentheses for this two term piece. 1 plus start the fraction parentheses, top of fraction parentheses, close that, divided by bottom fraction parentheses, close the bottom of the fraction, close the overall fraction, close this two term fraction, exponent, now multiply by 15 because it's a 15 year loan, finally close the last parentheses for the bottom of the fraction, and we'll get a monthly payment of $1,622.27 when rounded to two decimal places. So to calculate the total payments, we would take the monthly payment, multiply it by 12 to get the yearly payment, and now we multiply by 15 because it's only a 15 year mortgage. And when we do so, we get $292,008.60. So then to find the total payments, we take the total, or the total interest, excuse me, we take the total payments minus the original mortgage amount. And we get, we paid $116,508.66 in interest payments. Now I zoomed out a bit, it might be a little small to see, but I'll read out the numbers in the next few minutes. Remember these two examples, the only difference was this was a 30 year loan, whereas this was a 15 year loan. All the other details were the same. The total interest for the 30 year loan was $266,263.20. Whereas the total interest payments for the 15 year loan were $116,508.60. So more than twice the difference between them. And the overall mortgage payment, the monthly payment for the 30 year was 1227, or excuse me, 1227.12. And the monthly payment for the 15 year loan was 1622. 
So the takeaway from this is even if you have a 30 year loan, if you can pay more than the required amount, which I think you'll see in one of our other exercises for this week, by paying more than the monthly amount, you can pay off the loan sooner and reduce the amount of interest payments over time. And that was the point behind this example, is you can see the difference in interest versus a 30 year, no additional payments, or if the loan's paid off sooner, as shown in this example for a 15 year loan. And even if you have a 30 year loan, you can pay it off earlier by paying more than the required monthly payment each month. A loan amortization schedule tells you over each monthly payment how much of the monthly payment is going towards reducing the principal and how much is going towards the interest payment. As we'll see in our example, the early payments that you make within the loan, almost all of the amount of the payments goes towards your interest and it doesn't significantly reduce the principal. However, as you keep paying on the loan, the balance eventually shifts to where towards the end of the loan, the majority of your monthly payment goes to paying down the principal and very little goes to interest. Let's calculate our loan amortization schedule for this example. Let's assume that we've got a 30 year mortgage. The value of the mortgage is 200,000. Our interest rate is 6%, which has nicely been given to us converted to a decimal here. And our monthly payment is $1,200. In order to find the loan amortization schedule, step one is you calculate the monthly interest rate. So you take the annual interest rate, expressed as a decimal, and divide it by 12. Let's bring up our calculator. And our monthly interest rate is 0 0.005 per month for this example. And then to calculate the interest rate for the first month, you take your principal balance, which at the first month we still owe 200000 on this house because no payments had been made, times the 0 0.005, and we get $1,000 in interest. So for the first month, we owe $1,000 in interest payments. And how much are we paying in that first month? Well, we know our monthly payment is 1200 So to figure out how much of our monthly payment is going to go to reducing the principal, we take the total monthly payment of $1,200, subtract the amount that we pay to interest, and we get that $200 is going to be reduced from the principal in our first month. So then our new loan balance is equal to our initial amount, 200000 minus the fact that we paid $200 to principal, and we'll get $199,800 is what our remaining loan is for the second month. Now let's continue this on our next page, this idea of the example continues, and we'll show this amortization table as shown below. There's a few key ideas to focus on. The farthest left column is the payment number, Notice we start with payment 1, 2, 3, 4, then we skip to 30, 31, 125, 126, 360. If you've got a 30 year loan, you're making 360 different monthly payments. We could not show all of these on the table, so I've just selected a few at the beginning, mid range, and end. The interest payment column tells you how much you paid towards interest. For each monthly payment, the principal payment tells you how much of your monthly payment went towards paying down your principal. So at the beginning of the loan, the principal was 200000 The balance of the loan is what's left after the first payment. So we can see after our first payment, 200 of our dollars for the 1200 went to the principal, so we owed $199,800 for the second month. So to do the same calculation for the second month to make sense of these numbers, we take our loan amount and we multiply it by 0 .005. That tells us we had $999 in interest. Now remember, our loan was, our monthly payment is 1200 So subtract 999 from that 
and we get 201 got paid off from the principal. So we started with this 19, um, 199,800. And now we paid off $201. So our next balance is this amount. So let's find the values for the third month payment and repeat what we did on the previous page and just now. I'd encourage you to pause this, attempt on your own, unpause to check your work. So we're going to continue what we laid out on the previous page. We want to calculate of our $1,200 monthly payment, how much is going to interest, how much is principal, and then what's the new balance of the loan. Our previous balance of the loan was this value which I've typed into the calculator. We know from before our monthly interest rate is that value. So we've got an interest payment of 997.9, I need to round to one decimal or two decimal places. The five makes the 99 round up, which would turn actually this into a 998.00. For our interest payment, 1200 minus 998 leaves $202 to the principal. Notice that although it's a small change, as our monthly um, mortgage continues, the principal is going up and the interest is going down little by little. So taking our previous balance, 199599 subtract the principal payment of $202, our new balance is $199,397. And now we do this again for the fourth monthly payment. So take that value, multiply it by our monthly interest rate. That much should be going towards our interest payment for month four. The five would round that up to a nine, so that's $996.99. We have a $1,200 a month monthly payment. Of that, $996.99 is going to interest. So $203.01 is going to principal payment. From this last balance of the loan, let's find our new balance. And we'll get $199,193.99 as the final balance for the end of the fourth month. And as we continue to read the table, for instance, at 125 monthly payment, about a third of the way through, we see now 600 or roundabouts of our $1,200 is going to interest. Around 560 is going to principal. At the last monthly payment, only $3 is going to interest, and about $1,196 is going to principal. So we can see that over time, the amount going to interest goes down while the amount going to principal goes up. So a few things to take away is early payments in the loan. At early stages, a larger portion goes to interest. Over time, the interest decreases and the principal decreases, which means we have more principal reduction per payment. Towards the end, most of the payment goes towards the principal. And we were asked to round to the nearest dollar. So let's say that rounds to about $1,283. So the monthly mortgage payment should be less than, or at the very most, this value. But probably less than is better. The maximum total monthly debt obligation, that comes from the 36% rule. So I'm going to take 0 .03, or 0 0.36 times our gross monthly income, which we calculated earlier. That will be equal to, using our calculator, 0.36 times um, 1649.0. Point, okay. The 8 rounds the 99 up. Remember, 99 has no other place to go, so when we round this to two decimal places, the 99 gets rounded up, and that actually turns this into a 50, not a 49. And that's already rounded to the nearest dollar there. And what this means in terms of total monthly debt obligations is they're saying including the mortgage and any other debt you have, whether that's credit card, car, medical bill, student loan, 
all of that, if you're following the 36% rule, should not exceed 1650 for a person with this average annual income. Let's conclude with a quick calculation that compares some benefits towards renting versus buying. So renting benefits are flexibility, lower initial cost and no maintenance. Buying benefits include you can um, make tax deductions for the amount that's spent on your interest payments of the mortgage, potential equity, stability. In our previous example that we did in this video, we saw for $175,000 a month mortgage at a fixed interest rate. The monthly payment was $1,227.12. Over the 30-year course of the loan, the monthly payments totaled to $441,763.20, and we spent in total $266,263.20 in interest. Now let's consider the cost of renting over the same 30-year period. Now, to simplify our calculations, we're going to assume the monthly rent stays at $960, but we know that that is definitely not the case. Rent prices are likely to increase over a 30-year period due to inflation and market changes. But just for simplicity, let's assume $960 a month for 30 years. So the total rent over 30 years would then be $960 times 12 for the annual rent times 30 for the 30 years. and we get $345,600 spent on rent over the 30-year period with these assumptions. So just comparing these two, we see that while the total rent over 30 years is about $100,000 less than the total spent on our mortgage, I think this number is artificially low because the rent would not stay Uh, $960 a month for 30 years. It will increase and probably increase significantly. The amount we don't really know, but we do know that the mortgage payment is a fixed $1227 per month, and it's not quite certain what the uh, month rent would be 30 years from now. Another factor to take in mind is this rent had no maintenance, whereas a house, there is maintenance that comes up that you do have to pay for, so that does add to the total spent over time as well. So as we're concluding, what are some things that we saw in these notes? We learned how to calculate the monthly mortgage. We saw through our comparison of a 30-year fixed mortgage and a 15-year fixed mortgage, the difference between the two is the 15-year fixed mortgage has a much higher monthly payment, and that, did re that resulted in paying off the loan in half the time and a significantly less amount of interest. However, it could be challenging to meet that higher fixed requirement of paying off per month. So always remember if you do have a 30-year loan, you can simulate a 15-year loan by voluntarily paying extra each month so that the loan will be paid off sooner and you'll pay less in interest. However, if you ever had an issue come up where you couldn't sustain the higher monthly payments, you could always go back to the minimum monthly payment as required by the mortgage and then when your finances improved you could continue to pay off more per month to reduce the interest spent over time. So if you have any questions about this example or this section, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to help, and I hope you have a good day.